so initially upon being terrified because <laughs> they're they're not little and then they told us that they caught about 30 of them yesterday and they, they threw all the big ones back so I, I don't I would be terrified if I ever seen that in the water and it touched me <laughs> I've never cooked it <laughs> so um, we want to try it and really not add too much to it so we can get the flavor of the meat and really be able to um, just to try it and see what we were working with really and down here they mostly just deep fry catfish and I'm not going to try and compete with the experts on this, especially when I've never done it before so we decided to go a totally different route um, you know give them something that we we think would be uh, would turn out nice just just a little different flavor anyways to experience something new. What have got for us to play with? Well when I was a kid or up in Cape Cod we caught yeah. herring and bluefish in the spring and gave them to some of our parents to use in their gardens. So. Mm. <laughs> Had a whole dug for us. We built a big fire in there and let it, let it roar for a while. And then as it died down we started to kick the ashes down or the coals down, spread them out evenly. For the marinade for the fish, uh, we just took a bunch of awesome ingredients and put them together and to see how that how that would come out. Um, I actually took this fermented black garlic that's from Stan Martin. Um, he's a local farmer on Six Nations. Uh, some mag, a little bit of salt, um, and this, and we're gonna have sweet grass laying down inside of the pit too. Um, but yeah, this was just a regular simple syrup. I boiled it. Um, so it was like a super strong tea, and then I added the same amount of sugar because um, that's what a simple syrup is, it's 50-50 liquid to um, sugar. So like the aromatics of, uh, of the paste that we're using was just, um, I'm just excited to see because I'm so like want to do something different. Put that purple blanket across there, or purple beach towel across there, wet it down so it's going to steam. So when things pit cook, they steam more so than... <clears throat> more so than, than, than they're, they're smoking a barbecue. The flavor from the wood comes from the charcoal that's underneath. Um, now we set the fish on top, some sweet grass, and <clears throat> then we covered with corn husks, and then we covered again with another towel. And we built a fire back over the top of it, and it went all night. Just slow and low till it was all nice and fall apart. The skin just peeled off awesome. The meat came off awesome. Um, to me, I think it was it was fairly similar to working with sturgeon. Um, it is a fatty fish, but it's not fishy at all. Like you, you could, there's probably ways you could prepare it and be like, you know, people know from the chicken. I really want to promote the indigenous products to the area, and because that interest is here, they're interested in growing and. And just like anything with revitalizing culture, where they're revitalizing our foods everywhere. So um, I'm really happy that we could come down here and, and promote that, um, that it is possible and people are doing it and chefs are working tirelessly um, to revive these foods in our cultures. So um, everything's about food, right? It's one of the Shoni people. We have so many, we have ceremonies for everything, for every food. And, it's just nice to be able to help revive that and to be able to just make us proud of who we are again and not having to rely on anybody else because we don't have to. We never did. Our people never knew famine, right? We never, we were fine. We were, <laughs> we were doing all good till they came here. <laughs> and, but just so much that was lost so fast. It's, you know, it's heartbreaking, but um, to be able to, um, reintroduce it to people and to work with our foods is just an amazing opportunity for me as a chef um, and as a, as a, you know, Ginyonge Haga, 